Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel where we explore all things BIM architecture and design technology. Today we're diving into Autodesk Forma, a powerful tool for early stage design and analysis. Whether you're an architect, urban planner, or designer, Forma makes it easier than ever to explore concepts and collaborate effectively. Learn how to utilize Forma to get site context, early stage of design, analysis, and more. In this video, I'll show you how to start a project in Forma, touching on setup, site context, and a high level overview of its design and analysis capabilities. Don't worry, this is just the first of many videos on Forma where I will dive into greater detail on all things Forma. And here's a bonus. If you already have an Autodesk AEC collection or Forma subscription, you already have access to Forma. So let's get started. First, let's talk about accessing Autodesk Forma. So Forma is included in the Autodesk AEC collection subscription. So if you already use Revit, AutoCAD, or Navisworks, it's likely part of your toolkit. And Forma is also available as a standalone subscription if you're looking for a focused design tool. Unlike Revit, AutoCAD, or Navisworks, which are really all desktop applications, Forma is a cloud application or web application. Therefore, there is no installation required. Simply head to the Autodesk Forma platform and log in with your Autodesk account. And if you don't have a subscription yet, you can explore a free trial to get started. And you may have heard this term floating around, which is the Autodesk Platform Services or APS. This was formerly known as Autodesk Forge, and it is simply a collection of cloud-based services that connect tools, data, and workflows. And Forma is part of Autodesk Platform Services. Just a little tip. So if you don't know the Autodesk Forma page, you can just Google Autodesk Forma. That's what I did right here. And it is the first link at the very top. So you can just select that link and it's going to bring you to the Autodesk Forma page where you can log in, sign into your account. Once you sign into your account, you will then have the option to access your Forma hub and it'll bring you directly to your Forma hub. Let's pause and take a look at this screen quickly. At the top on the left hand side, this is where you have your hub. You'll be able to select to create new projects. You have the Forma homepage. This is where you can go to access all your projects, where you can manage your members and where you can access your hub settings. On the right hand side, if you wanna stay up to date with Forma's YouTube channel, forum or blog, this is where you can sign up for all those updates. In the center, they also have the option to create a new project. If this is your first time using Forma, as I suspect and maybe since you're watching this video, you can also select to try a demo project, which will step you through some of the functionality. I highly recommend doing this. You can open up an existing demo project, take a tour of the interface, and even see other workflows and other success stories down here. So, Take some time and explore and learn about Forma from these examples. But right now, we're just going to go ahead and create a brand new project. Once you select to create a new project, it's going to take you on this map where you can input where your site location is. So I have a site that I'm gonna put in that is in New York City. I just kind of looked on Google Maps and saw an empty lot and I'm picking that site for this example. Once you input either the coordinates or the address, it's going to allow you to confirm a map area. So you can just go ahead and on your mouse, select the left key and pan around to select the area. You can zoom in and out, but once you zoom out too far, and get to this point where you lose that little square, it won't let you select it. But you can get a pretty wide area of your site. We don't really need that much, so I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here. There, Pam, I don't need the river. And that's gonna be the area that I want to get. We can confirm our map area. It's going to think a little bit and then bring us to our project. Okay, so once your project gets started, 
it is time to set up your site context. You can upload existing site data like CAD or GIS files or use Forma's tools to import site information directly. So Forma supports topographical data, urban surroundings, which really gives you a complete view of your project's environment. You simply can select to add different things from this list of what Forma already gives you. For example, I'm just going to use the open city model here. I'm just going to select add and then order it. Order was successful and we can move on. Maybe I want to use this Esri terrain. Add it, order it. It automatically gives me the same site that I selected previously and maybe I want some road information. But feel free to select and order what you need for your project. And you can use the filters at the top as well to get more specific. Once you are done, simply close out and give it a few seconds to get all that information into your project. So here we are, we have our buildings, we have our roads and we have our site. So we can use typical panning and rotating, um, very similar to how you work in Revit to see our site. So this is the site that I had set out in the address. So this is what I can use as an example. Let's take a look at Forma's user interface before we dive into any modeling. In the middle, you have your canvas where you can pan and rotate and see all of the information. On the left hand side, this is where you're going to get the information about your project. You can create duplicates of your project. So if you're creating different design options or things like that, you have multiple people working, you can duplicate it. So you essentially it's very similar to Revit's design options. You can have different options there. Uh, you then have your library. So this is all of that terrain, buildings and roads that we ordered. And we can import further things like from CAD or GIS files or order more data if we were missing anything. Then you have your extensions. This is where you can search for all of the extensions on the Autodesk App Store, all the Forma extensions. So here you can scroll down and see any of the extensions that you want to add. There aren't that many yet, but I'm sure this list is going to grow. One that you might want to include is the Autodesk format add-in for Revit. This will allow you to communicate and push data back and forth between Forma and Revit. We also have one for Rhino and you can add the Dynamo player so that you can run Dynamo scripts directly in Forma. On the right hand side, this is where we're going to find all our modeling and analysis tools. So the top here is going to allow you to switch between modeling and the different analysis options that you can run within Forma. Then on the side of that, we have all the different options to model things from buildings to vegetation to understanding your site, roads, volumes, 3D sketches, getting measurements, labeling things, and adding more extensions. Now that we looked at the user interface, let's take a look at quickly some of the things that we can do just to get a basic overview of the modeling. So the first thing I actually want to do is lay out my site. So I'm gonna go and specify the site limits. Now just to note, just like in Revit and AutoCAD, there are keyboard shortcuts that you can see here. So instead of clicking this, I can also just click on S and it brings me to that same command. So I can identify my site limits, where my building is going to go. Here we go. We get some information here, like the square footage, and we can name it whatever we want. Then we can go ahead and add buildings. Now these are some fun tools. We can add a line building, a basic building, or even houses. I'm just gonna add a basic building here. I want to leave some room in the front, 
for some greenery. So we're just going to create an outline of our building here. And then we can specify how tall we want it to be. Let's just make it as tall as this building next to it for now. But once I do that, I can select the building and make some adjustments here. How tall do I want my floor to floor height? How many levels do I want? I can even go in and select level by level. Maybe my first floor is taller. So we can see it change here very quickly. You'll even notice that once we select the whole building, we also have this option that I really like to convert to 3D sketch. Note that a lot of this functionality is still in beta, and you can see that by the beta note on the right there, but we can still go ahead and maybe select this uh, corner here and raise the edges a little bit to give it a sloped effect. Once you're done editing it, you can exit the drawing mode and here we have our building design. Next, maybe I want to add some vegetation. We can add a tree line or an area. I'm just going to add an area here in the front of my building, rough sketch of where I want my trees. And we can also increase the height and maybe how many trees we want in this area and so on and so forth. So you can see that being updated. Once I have my building and vegetation laid out, I can also then begin to explore some of the analysis tools. We can see it running on my building site. Feel free to explore some of the modeling and some analysis tools. However, don't worry, I will create more videos detailing all of these different modeling features and the different analysis tools as well as some of the add-ins. Finally, I did want to talk about collaboration because collaboration is seamless in Forma. You can share your project with team members or even export data to other Autodesk tools like Revit for detailed development. Forma is designed to integrate smoothly into your existing workflows. And what is great about Forma being a cloud platform is there is no saving, publishing, or exporting to share with your team. It is all live, and as long as your team has access to your Forma Hub, they will see the Forma project and be able to work with you in it. There is a way to get this data into Revit, and you simply need to make sure that you install the Forma plugin. Once you've installed the Forma plugin, you can come over to your proposals and choose which proposal to send to Revit. Simply select on the three dots here and click send to Revit. You can also then download the Revit add-in directly from here if you haven't already done so. Lots of options to download the Revit plugin for Forma. Now that I've sent it over, I can come over to Revit and I'm gonna head to the massing and site tab. Here I have my Forma plugin added and we have three options to load our proposal, update our proposal, or unlink our proposal. So we're simply going to select to load our proposal. So once you select to load in the proposal, you'll see all the proposals you have available to load. I just have one. You can come in and select some options here for what elements get created and what context gets created. So just for this ease, I'm gonna go through and turn some of this off. Once we have our settings done, we can simply load. That's it for today's overview of starting a project in Autodesk Forma. We covered project setup, site contacts, and touched on design analysis, as well as getting your Forma project into Revit. Remember, if you're already using the Autodesk AEC collection, you might already have access to Forma, and it's worth checking out. Make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and stay tuned for the next videos in this series where we'll dive deeper into Forma's modeling and analysis tools. As always, stay empowered, stay inspired, and always challenge what is possible. See you next time.